Hi guys, it's Vesna here. Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm doing a mega video for Christmas in July. So what I've done is I've taken a whole bunch of your favorite DIYs and put them together for you. So it's going to be a mega video. It's going to be a long one. Grab a snack, enjoy it, and hopefully you can find some of these items easily because some of the items are things that you just find in your everyday Dollar Tree and other items will be things that you need to buy. So it'll give you some ideas for what you need to purchase once those decorations are coming out because we all know they'll be out probably end of August, beginning of September, at least here where we are, and they go fast. So hopefully it gives you some ideas, some inspiration. If not, just like I said, grab a cup of coffee or something cool to drink and enjoy this video. So the first DIY that I'm uh, doing is a snowman and I'm using these snow globes from the Dollar Tree. I'm using two of them. Um, I'm taking off the lids and all of that stuff and I'm putting it off to the side. I won't be using it for this craft but I might be able to use it for something else. And I am painting the inside of the snowman with a mixture of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and um, water. And the reason I'm using this is because I had already made that mixture and I just wanted to see if I watered it down, whether it would be a better fit or not. I do have to, I do wind up doing several coats of this. So maybe if you just use straight paint, you wouldn't have to do so many coats. But I was also just sometimes straight, the straight Rissolian paint is quite thick. So I wanted it to be a little bit more runny. So it's not, I don't know, I thought it might glob too much. So, but the main reason I used this was because I had it on hand. Um, you could go with acrylic as well, um, but the chalk paint worked really well. The watered down chalk paint worked well. So after two or three coats, depending on your paint, this is what they look like. Um, then I'm going to connect them together. Um, I'm going to use a combination of Weld Bond and um, hot glue. So that way I can make sure that it's a permanent hold and the snowman doesn't fall apart. So I'm just going to put this one over top of the other one and just hold them tight for a little bit. The reason I'm using the combination is because the hot glue will give me that immediate hold and the weld bond will give the permanent hold. So I'm just going to pop the hot glue over here. I wind up having to kind of adjust it a little bit because I didn't um, take into con to consideration the, uh, the curve of the, um, the globe. So you just want to hold this for, you know, 10, 15 seconds and um, that'll give you that hold from the hot glue so that way you can do your work. I'm not concerned about the, you know, the glue showing on the sides or anything like that because I'm going to be putting a scarf over that so I don't have to worry about it. But while that sets, I'm going to be making the snowman's hat. For the hat, I'm going to be using this leftover ribbon roll. So um, there was that faux fur from the Dollar Tree and it came on just a little bit of a higher ribbon roll and I'm just going to be painting it black because it was the perfect shape for his top hat. And I'm just using acrylic, um, black acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree. Once you cover this completely, um, then you can set it off to dry. I did not worry too much about um, covering the bottom part of it completely because um, it's going on the snowman anyway. You, I just had to do one coat. I, um, by the time I went over the whole thing, the top part there that I had to go over dried up a bit. So I just put a little bit of black paint over top and that's it. So while that dries, I'm going to attach the scarf and um, draw on his nose and his eyes. For his scarf, I'm using Dollar Tree ribbon. I just hot glue the scarf around his neck 
And then I make a bow that I hot glue together. Just I made little loops and then I hot glue them together to make a bow for his scarf. For his eyes, I'm just using acrylic paint and for his na nose, I'm going to I'm just cutting out a triangle shape from my foam, orange foam, and I'm just hot gluing it on. I also use the black paint for his buttons. You could do anything you wanted. I just thought freehand drawing it would be just as good as hot gluing something. Now for the bottom of the snowman, I'm just gluing on a piece of cardboard. And then I'm going to be making kind of snow <laughs> around the snowman. For the snow, I'm just using um, like the fake spider webs from Halloween. I was going to use hot glue to attach the spider webs to the cardboard, but then I wound up using Mod Podge because it worked a bit better. Unfortunately, I don't have the best view of me doing this, but I wind up attaching some of the ribbon around the top hat. As well, I attach a little green pick. You can see it in the picture there. As well as some pine cones, like the miniature pine cones to the top of his hat. Um, just for extra added decor. Before I hot glue the hat to his head, I just position it, making sure that I'm putting it in the right spot where I want it. And um, then I hot glue it just so that I'm not hot gluing it the wrong way. So that is it for this DIY. I think it turned out really cute. He is adorable. Um, other than drying time, this was a really quick and easy DIY to make and, like I said, very inexpensive. So for the supplies, you're going to need these two of these Christmas trees uh, from the Dollar Tree, some black paint and some white paint. So I'm just using these acrylic paints. You could use chalk paint if you have it. You could use... Um, whatever paint you have on hand. Then this fur I might and might not use. Um, these berries, maybe. And then this um, rag from the Dollar Tree, this dishcloth. And I have these crocs there also from the Dollar Tree. Uh, they were my son's, I think, before he even really learned how to walk, or maybe he was just learning how to walk. I don't know. They're just little slippers we had for around the pool. Um, they don't fit him anymore, so I'm going to be painting them black, and those will be the shoes for my gnome. So I only needed one coat of the, the black, and you don't have to. If you have um, boots or anything like that that you could use, um, you could do that. I just didn't have anything that I wanted to use for this that I that I thought I could use for this. I thought I had a pair of ceramic boots, like a little planter that looked like boots, but I must have seen it somewhere. I couldn't find it. I don't then maybe I don't have it. I must have seen it at someone's house and thought that that was really neat, but then I thought I had it or maybe I thought I was going to buy it. I don't know. Sometimes I think I have things and I don't actually have them. So once they are painted and um covered all the way through. You can set them off to dry and you can start to um, make your little gnome. Now whatever you decide to use for your feet, it doesn't matter like I said, um, you'll just have to either connect it together somehow um, if it's not together and you're going to need some floral foam as well which I forgot to show you at the beginning of the video. Um, and the floral foam will be so that you can stick your tree in it and then you stick it into the shoe itself. So for the tree, you're going to take um, the bottom part of it off. And I always keep all of the little things because I might be able to use them for something else. And then you just have to t uh, put the branches down. So the normally the tree branches go up and you want to have them go the opposite way. So you're just going to push them all down at the bottom and fluff them out um, as best as you can. And you're going to do this with both trees. So once you fluff out um, the second tree and have it um, the way you want it, you're going to join the two trees at the flat sides. 
what I mean by flat sides is you need one you need uh, one side on each tree to kind of be flatter so that you can join them and make a wider gnome like so and then you're going to use the top part of your branch just to tie them together and once they are joined together you're going to again kind of fluff it out a little bit um, to make it look a little bit fuller and your body for your gnome is pretty much done um, you will want to put, put it in your floral foam so that way you can um, put the hat on and fluff it out even more so you can kind of see what it looks like standing up so what I did here was I just took um, two pieces of floral foam that I think will fit into the shoe uh, should have measured it before I painted it so make sure you do that and I'm just going to put the base of the tree onto those pieces of floral foam and stretch it out as much as I, I mean, fluff out the tree as much as I need to, to make it like a fuller body of a gnome. Then you're going to take your dishcloth and you're going to fold it in half and you're going to kind of cut out um, a moon shape. But first you're going to cut a little piece. So as you can see, I'm doing about three squares. And this will be for your mittens. So you're going to cut that piece out and put that off to the side. And then you're just going to shape your mittens. So what I'm doing is I'm making two, I'll be making four, four pieces of this. So right now I'm getting two, then I'm going to twist it in, I mean twist it, fold it in half and I'm going to cut the piece right here and then I'm going to cut out my mitten shapes once again um, and then I'm going to hot glue these together. Now when you're hot gluing them you want to make sure that you're hot gluing the um, inside of the mitten together. Now if your cloth is the same color on both sides this doesn't really matter if it only matters if it's not the same on both sides. Um, and you're just kind of shaping the mittens without the thumb. You don't need to worry about the thumb. So you want to make sure that that dries, um, cools off and dries, like sets for a bit before you try to flip it over. So that's what I, why I'm leaving it right now. And while you're waiting for that, you want to cut your hat. And again, I'm flipping it on the like inside out because that's how I'm going to be gluing it. And then I'm going to be turning it inside, like the right side in. So what I'm doing is just kind of cutting like a bit of a moon shape I would say um, you can do this however you want so I'm just starting at the open corner and I'm going up to the closed corner and I'm trying to keep as close as I can to the edge my scissors need a good sharpening I've been using them too much on things that I shouldn't be using them so they're a little bit dull but um, you get the idea I've seen this done with a scarf too from the Dollar Tree and um, so you could use that. It's really whatever fabric you have that you can use. I just happen to have this dishcloth and I like the, the plaid right now so I thought this would make a really cute hat for him. And so what you're going to do now is you're just going to um, glue the hat together and don't worry about the edges not being um, super even because you won't be able to see it once you glue everything together and flip it inside out. Thank you. 
I'll wait for this to set and cool, you can flip over your other mitt your mitten. And you want to do this gently so you don't rip it open, but your hot glue should stick fairly well together. And then once you flip it over, it's a nice cute little mitten shape. So then while the other mitten dries, you want to flip the hat over and then you can either attach a jingle bell to the end or you can just kind of tie it to make it like a little um, ball at the end. And so I do decide that I want to use that fur and add it to the bottom of the hat. So I just measured out um, how much I need it around and I'm going to hot glue it to the very bottom because I want the hat to be a little bit longer. Um, so also be careful with that whenever you're picking your material, make sure that it's as long as you want it, depending on how long you want his hat to be. So I'm just going to go and, like I said, bring the fur around and then I'll cut it to where, uh, um, I think I need to, to have it. And then that's about it. You just hot glue it and then there's your little cute little hat. And see what I meant about um, even if the corner, the edges weren't even when I cut them because I flipped it inside out, they look even now. So make sure you do that if you want to have nice, beautiful, even edges. So once you have your hat made, then all that's missing is to put the hat on the tree and to give him a little nose. So what I am doing for the nose is I'm using a Christmas ornament. And when you're putting his hat on, you want to make sure that the bottom is lower than the top. I mean, sorry, the back of the hat is lower than the front of the hat. And so that way it hangs nice. So that's what I'm doing here is just positioning it. And I'm just using a champagne colored ornament uh, from the Dollar Tree. It came in one of those tubes for a dollar and I'm only using one and I'm putting lots and lots of hot glue on it so I can pop it in just under his hat and you want to make sure that you find a little branch to glue it onto and then you just hold it down so it sets a little bit for a few seconds and his body is all ready to go. Now you just want to put him into your, your shoes or boots or whatever you did. And sorry, but before I go ahead and do that, I do wind up using that white paint. I thought maybe I would use the fur as his beard, but I decided that so a little bit of white paint to make him have kind of a white beard is a better way to go. So I just added a little bit of white paint to my um, plate here, and I'm just adding it on to his um where his beard is so just under his nose and once you have the perfect amount of white and it dries off a little bit you can go ahead and glue his mittens to his um to where his arms would be and so what i just try to do is i try to find a spot where both sides are kind of have a branch sticking out so it's so it's somewhat even his shoes I'm just um, connecting together with just some floral wire and I was going to hot glue them but I thought that might give out um, if I'm moving him so I thought this was a better way to do it and I'm just finding a hole and I'm going to tie it together and nice and tight and that should keep them from moving too much. And once this is nice and snug then I go ahead and I put that floral foam into the shoes. Um, I just wedge it in there so I take it off of the from uh, from the tree and I just wedge it into the shoes so that way I can put the Christmas tree on top uh, without having to worry about you know dealing with the actual Christmas tree um, and I made it a pretty tight fit so make sure you do that as well so this will prevent it from sliding out of the shoe. And so then all you do is just um, push the bottom of your tree into the floral foam. It doesn't matter if you get the same hole or not. Um, and there he is all finished.
So what I'm starting with is this little sign from the Dollar Tree. It's that little homemade sign. I thought it was a cute sign, but I, I didn't, it wasn't to my style. So I thought it would be perfect for a little mini Christmas tiered tray decor item. What I did first was I removed everything that was stuck on the tray and then I realized that I could actually remove all of the cardboard little bits and pieces off and this actually helped with making kind of a smooth surface for me to work on. So even though I added the paint first, I wound up going back and just ripping off those little bits of cardboard and glue so that way I have a nice smooth finish. Once I have all of that off, and I have a smoother finish, I go back and I apply my Rust-Oleum Chalked Linen White Paint to this little mini Dollar Tree sign. Once I have the coverage that I wanted, I do several coats of this once it dries. I don't have it completely and perfectly covered because I am okay with a little bit of the black coming through. It gives it that rustic look that if you've watched my videos, I love the rustic look. So this gives me that little vibe. Then I attach this ornament. So this is the little wagon ornament that they had at the Dollar Tree. And I attach this to the middle of the sign. And then I'm going to add these mini Christmas trees to each side of the wagon. And I'm just using hot glue to attach these. And then I add some snowflakes and the word Mary. Everything is from the Dollar Tree. And I decide that it needs a little bit extra so then I add a mini wreath and I'm using a branch from the mini Christmas tree from the Dollar Tree and I'm just curving it into a little wreath and attaching it, hot gluing it to the sign and then I just go over top of everything with some acrylic paint, white acrylic paint just to give it a little bit of a snow covered look. Although this one had more supplies than I normally use in, in one project, I did have everything on hand and if you're crafting for the holiday season you'll likely have these things on hand because you would have bought them for various other projects. So it's fairly inexpensive to make but it did use up more material so if you had to buy each one I guess it would be around five dollars that you'd spend on this but I think for five dollars this cute little tear tray decor sign turned out beautiful I love it I think it's gorgeous it's very winter like very Christmassy and it'll look great on my tray DIY. This is another simple, inexpensive piece to make. I kind of went a different way than I thought I would go and wound up doing something similar like I did in one of my other videos, which I could. But what I was going to originally do is I was going to make a mini cutting board, kind of like the ones from the Dollar Tree that you can buy the plastic ones, but I feel like they're a little bit too big for my tiered tray, so I wanted to make a mini version of it using just some cardboard items and some leftover pieces of wood. So I went ahead and I cut everything out, I hot glued my little handle to the cutting board and I just could not get it to be centered the way I wanted it to be. It was driving me absolutely crazy. I could not get, I even used the cutting board to help me uh, trace around it so that I could get the size and the shape that I wanted, but I just could not get it and I wasn't happy with it. And I kept on cutting, cutting, cutting until it was too small. And then I gave up because it was taking a lot longer than it should. And really when a craft is driving me crazy that much, I need to step away from it and not do it. I do like to show these things to you because I think it's important for you to see that even even if we do this all the time, we still have that thought process and those fumbles where we're like, well, nope, this didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So that way you don't get discouraged. There's lots of people who think that they can't craft or can't DIY or can't make anything and they kind of get scared of it. And then if they think that, you know, even somebody who does it all the time doesn't make mistakes, then they might get discouraged. So this way, hopefully it encourages you to try it anyway. So as you can see, like I go ahead and I create my little 
cutting board using my buffalo check I decided on the red instead of the black and white I wanted the black and red and once I wrap it I realize I still don't like the shape of it and then I go ahead and cut everything off I paint the handle a dark brown almost black color I stick on my little wooden gingerbread man um, thinking that I'm gonna be like I said happy with it but I really wasn't so then I cut everything off and I decide I'm going to attach some popsicle sticks as a frame to this and it'll just be a little sign so you I made an ornament with a sleigh kind of like this but this will just be a sign I'm not making it an ornament so I'm just trying to measure out so that it's exactly the same uh, distance from the top and bottom then I'll be cutting it off at the bottom to make sure I shape it. I'm hot gluing it down and I'm making just kind of like a frame like that. And I'm letting the popsicle sticks hang over because I think it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And that's all there is to this one. So when I saw this stocking, I thought it would be a perfect little addition to my tiered tray. So what I'm doing is actually I'm going to wrap it in the buffalo check pattern, which I got a fabric, which is a little roll that came from the Dollar Tree. And the J came, I mean, the stocking came from the Dollar Tree, as did the faux fur. So I'm just going to wrap the stocking around. I'm hot gluing it to the wood. And then I'm going to hot glue the faux fur on top and stain the bottom of the stocking the little plank that it stands on so that way it's a bit of a darker color you don't have to stain it I had the Annie Sloan dark wax so that is what I used but you absolutely do not have to use that you could paint it brown you could paint it white you could do a full stain it's really up to you and here is the mini stocking all finished I think it turned out really cute For the ornament, you're going to need a pine cone, some green acrylic paint, as well as either a cork from a wine bottle or one of these little birch stumps that you can get at the Dollar Tree as well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint this pine cone, but I didn't have the deep forest green, so I'm just mixing a little bit of black acrylic paint with that leaf green to give me a little bit of a darker green that I'm looking for and then I'm going to paint this pine cone and again all these things you can easily find at the Dollar Tree and they come in bigger packages so you'll be spending about two dollars on this DIY but you will get more than one DIY out of it so for about two dollars you could get about five ornaments and so all I'm doing is one ornament for you guys but I'm painting it out green you can see that the black added just a little bit of a deeper green than just the leaf green on its own but you could totally just use the leaf green if that's what you wanted so these are the wood stems that i was talking about and once this pine cone paint dried i just attached hot glued the stem to the bottom of the pine cone they're all slightly different sizes so i just made sure that this one would stand on its own if i wanted it to stand on its own and then i just attach um, a little bit of jute rope to the pine cone with just a very tiny piece that was left over from a different project. You could also do floral wire if you had it or you could hot glue even an ornament hanger if you wanted. And there you go there's one ornament completed. Here it is with a little bit of the brown showing through. I think it's a very cute little Christmas tree ornament made out of a pine cone. The great thing about this, you could even make it for free if you have pine cones and little stems or wine, wine like corks at home. It could be a free DIY. This DIY is dollar store ornament, um, with the exception of this little ring from a mason jar. And that was just left over from my canning jars and it's a little bit rusty so I didn't want to use it on my cans so I'm using it here you don't have to use this you could use any kind of ring form it could be from just if you took some floral wire and you wrapped it around together 
you could use that. You could even use pipe cleaners if you wanted. But I'm using this because usually everyone has this on hand or can easily find it. They're not very expensive and you might be able to get them at the thrift store. To be honest with you, I never checked at, I mean, the thrift store at the Dollar Tree. I never actually checked in ours. And I know in the States, you guys have a little bit more than we do here in Canada. So you guys may, may be able to get these. Let me know. Uh, so anyway, you're just taking this and the one of those Dollar Tree trees and you're cutting off the branches and just wrapping them around the uh, canning lid. And that's about it. You could use garland if you picked it up. They didn't have any more garland when I was looking for it. So I bought this tree and I've used it for several projects. And all you do is wrap it around. Very, very easy ornament. So once you finish wrapping it around and getting it to the fullness that you want, then you can go ahead and make it snow covered. And I'm just doing this by applying some chalked linen white paint. You could use acrylic. This is the paint I was using for a previous project, so I had it on hand. So that's what I'm using. I also, the last little stem I wrapped around, but I left a little bit at the top so I could attach an ornament hanger to it. And it looks kind of like a wreath hanger. And so I'm just making the whole wreath snow covered because I love that look. And then I'm adding some leftover berries from another project and I'm hot gluing those to this little wreath. So you could end here and it would still look cute. You could add, there's those little garlands that you can get, like those mini garlands that you could get at the Dollar Tree. But I chose to use these little berries because I had them left over. So I'm just hot gluing them around the wreath so it looks like it's, it's snow covered and berry covered. So another quick and inexpensive ornament that will look cute in any, on any Christmas tree, especially if you're doing uh, the farmhouse theme. So here it is all finished. So I really love these little red pickup trucks from the Dollar Tree. I also really love the like die cast ones that are big. However, they're quite expensive. So I thought, hey, why don't I make my own? So I got two of these uh, little red trucks from the Dollar Tree as well as um, this crate, the mini crates that they have at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to be making a little red truck. So I will start off by removing these Christmas trees. So I was carefully removing the trees because I will be saving them for a different project. And um, they're great shape and they're perfect for Christmas. I, I will have to paint over them and I'll take off the garland that they have around, but they'll be perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and scrape off this Merry Christmas because I really don't want it on here. So I'm just using um, a scraper here to try and get off as much as I can and I will sand a bit down too. Sometimes when you paint over the glitter it still shows so I wanted to get rid of it. So now I will go ahead and I'm going to paint um, my little truck using this espresso paint, a little bit of white, some black acrylic paint, and some red acrylic paint. All of them from the dollar <coughs> um, Dollar Tree and the I'm gonna make kind of like a more like a burgundy kind of red because I didn't want the truck to be this holiday red it's a little bit too bright for me so I'm just gonna mix some colors so I'm mixing the red with a bit of the brown and a bit of the black and first I'll start off with just painting it out red to get it to be um, that red color and then I'll mix in some of the other colors so I do wind up painting both sides of one of the pickup trucks because I I will be putting it on the, um, like I have to flip it over so I need the other side. And the reason I painted the inside was because I didn't want um, like through the sides or anywhere the Merry Christmas peeking out so I just kind of painted a little bit over top of that one. Um, I won't show you the whole process but I'll show you what it looks like finished. I think you kind of can clue in on how to paint your little pickup truck. So, like I said, I did sand though a little bit just to get that Merry Christmas off as much as I could. 
So the crate part, the crate, I'm going to paint black. I'm painting it on the inside and outside of the little um, bin because I want to make sure that it, when I switch it out for a different season, because I will be using this for the fall as well for decorating, um, if I decide to put pumpkins or something that's not so bulky like Christmas trees, um, it's not going to show the light color of the crate. So once that's nice and dry, um, as you can see, I did only the top parts of the crate, but inside fully. I'm going to hot glue it to one side of the pickup truck, and then I'm going to hot glue and weld bond, I believe I used, um, for the other side. Now, I did have to remove those little um, tire rims off of the one pickup truck because they um, it wouldn't let me have like a nice flush glue. So, and I did save them so I could use them on the other side once I finished painting the other side of the, the one pickup truck. So once both sides were painted, I glued them and then I just clamped them. Even though I used the weld, weld bond, it still needs a little bit of clamping for it to stick, otherwise it was falling over. So now I'm just going to measure out my popsicle sticks. Originally, I was going to cut them to size so that they would be so that they would be flush with the um, pickup trucks, but I was worried that I wouldn't cut them evenly, and quite frankly, it was taking me a really long time. And I I don't like when the cuts aren't perfect, so I thought this would be better to just leave it whole. So that's what I'm planning out here. So once I've placed all of the popsicle sticks, it's time to paint them and I'm going to paint, be painting them that same combination of red, brown and black as I did the pickup truck. This time I'm just mixing the colors together, whereas the first time I painted it red and then I just went over uh, with a mixture. So after I paint the top of the pickup truck red, I decide that I need a little bit of height to the crate. So I'm adding some um, like little rails on the side and I'm using that with, I'm doing that with um, one garden pick. Um, so you could also use a paint stick too, but these are garden picks from the Dollar Tree that I got this summer garden stakes I should say and I'm cutting it in half and I'm using one on each side and then I'm just using some popsicle sticks to make kind of like a like to hold to hold it basically up but um, so I'm using four popsicle sticks and uh, one garden pick so here is what that looks like and I've also gone ahead and painted it black so I then went ahead and I'm and I put some floral foam in there and just to give it a bit of height and then I'm adding some Christmas trees to make it appear like the little red truck is carrying Christmas trees. So I also went ahead and I painted kind of the top part of the hood uh, just added a little bit of black detail some lights and I painted the windshield white and there he is. So this cutting board was painted black and then uh, using the charcoal, Rust-Oleum charcoal black, chalked black paint. And then I painted it with the linen white. Um, and then now I'm adding Mod Podge. Now this was 
from a different project where I tried to do something and it didn't work out. So as you can see, it's all peeling off. So now I'm just adding Mod Podge to the entire piece so more paint does not peel off before I go ahead and I add um, my image on there. So the Mod Podge will hopefully allow for the paint not to peel off, like if I ding it or anything like that. And now I just want to distress it a little bit further. I thought I would sand it and get the, the reason I had originally painted it black was because I thought I could paint it black, then paint it white and distress it and it would look really nice. But now I, because I didn't use it for that project, it was for project this summer. I'm going to um, just distress it with some espresso brown acrylic paint. Um, just because I am worried if I start to distress too much, I'll get the red showing and I don't want the red showing. When I do this distressing, I always kind of try to dry the paint off on a paper towel or something as much as I can so it's a really dry, dry brush and sometimes if I find I've added too much, I'll just wipe it off with a paper towel or a baby wipe. This time it's a dry baby wipe, but um, sometimes I use wet baby wipes to just kind of blend the colors together, but this time it was just a dry baby wipe that had dried out. And then I'm just kind of randomly putting the distressing on. And then I'll go ahead and use um, some black acrylic paint and some pumpkin colored acrylic paint to do the little snowman. So here's the completed snowman. I did wind up adding um, a bow and you can tell me which one you like better, whether you like the bow or no bow on this snowman. But here he is without the bow. I think he's cute this way too. I'm not sure where I'll put him in my decor. He'll go somewhere probably in my kitchen since it's a cutting board. I'm not going to cut food on it obviously, but I think he's really cute. And then here he is with just a bow that I added. A super simple bow that I made just by using some ribbon and hot gluing. I'm really excited to show you um, my version of this joy wreath. Um, I got this idea somewhat from Glue Guns and Roses, but I tweaked it to be my own. So what I'm doing is using these two um, wreath forms, and they are the candy cane wreath forms, and I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree garland as well. So you'll need two garlands and two of these wreath forms as well as just a normal round wreath form or anything that you have round that's kind of like a wreath. So um, I'm just pulling the garland through the first one and then I just wrap the rest of them all around. Um, I do it on the first one and I twist it around like just at the top and then I just wrap it around so it covers the entire wreath. And now this is not quite one full garland. I had cut off maybe, I don't know, like 10 inches off of this for another project that I was doing so um, it's missing a little bit so I apologize for the um, awkward <laughs> angle of this but it was, um, it was a little bit difficult to just with the space that I have to show you this so that you know you could see the entire process because I'm you know, twisting and turning it, wrapping it around, but you get the idea. I'm wrapping it all around until I get to the very top, and then again, I twist it around the top, and I'll just speed it up here. And here is the J completed. Again, really easy and inexpensive way to make this. For the Y, I will also be using the candy cane form. However, I'm going to be cutting it um, so that I could make the Y. So what I need to do is right at the bottom kind of where where it meets the other part of like the end of the Y, I'm just going to cut cut it so that I can make a Y. 
So as you can see, I'm just, like I said, so that both sides, it looks like a U once you cut it. So but both sides are even, so that's where you want to cut it. So it, like wherever the candy cane starts, like the neck and then ends. So there you go. That's what I mean. I'm not explaining it well, but you can see now. And then I'm going to join these together. I am using some hot glue, but I also wind up using twist ties because... Um, it just doesn't hold it the way I'd like it to hold when I'm twisting it and turning it to wrap the, um, the garland around. So I tried the hot glue. It wasn't doing what I needed it to do. So I'm going to do the twist ties and, um, you can add hot glue if you'd like to, just to kind of give it another more secure hold, but this does a really good job. So I'm just adding a couple twist ties and making them as tight as I can. And then that'll give me the Y shape. So like I said, like a really easy DIY today. And again, I'm going to wrap the garland the same way. So I'll start with the tops and then I'll do the bottom. I will cut it off and then continue. I'm just going to speed it up again because you don't need to hear me talking about how I'm doing this. Um, but yeah, so you can see I also just added it here, but it didn't really do too, too much. So the um, twist ties were a better option. And that is it for the Y. Then you just want to adjust it, making sure that you kind of cover all of the metal parts of it. And for the O, I opted, now you could um, use anything that you can find. I opted to use one of these um, green wreath forms, also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using the burlap ribbon and just wrapping it around this wreath form. It gives me like a break from the green. Now you could, I've seen, this is where the twist was, the video that I saw used um, like a wreath already made out of like the garland. But like, I think she bought it somewhere already done. So for mine, I used this because I wanted to break up the green a little bit. So I'm just going to hot glue the first part and then I'm going to twist it around um, just until I get it so it doesn't show the green. And so leaving the ribbon as is, I felt that it wasn't done. So I want, I mean the ribbon, the wreath as is, I felt like it wasn't done. So I wanted to add some of this Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm just going to be making my version of a bow. Um, we've talked about this in my other videos, you've watched them. So I make my own version of bows. Um, so I'm just going to cut as much as I think I need. I'll cut a few pieces. Basically, I just hot glue the bow to the wreath. Now, I kind of contemplated, did I want the O to kind of hang from the J? Um, but then I decided I did not. So I'm just creating this bow. And I'm going to speed it up because you don't need to watch the whole process. Um, but I will be hot gluing these pieces together because I'm not liking the way it looks when you just tie it like a shoelace.
So I, after I finished the bowl to the way that I liked it, I contemplated putting in some pine cones, but then decided against it. And here are the versions. So I have three versions of it completed. So here's the first one with the, with an addition of berries um, that are spread apart and the Y being tilted. Um, then I thought this was kind of cute, but then I also thought if you just didn't want it tilted and want it straight, because I know there's people who have preferences, that would be one way to do it. Or clumped berries together like these, or without it like this one. Do let me know which way you like the best. Number three, without number two clumped or number one um, scattered. For today's video, I'm going to be making a joy sign using these Dollar Tree frames and some jute rope. So today's project is fairly easy to do and it shouldn't take you too, too long. So what we're doing today is I'm going to be creating the word joy using my jute rope and I'm going to be gluing it, gluing little pieces of the jute rope together to create the J, the O, and the Y, and then I'll just be hot gluing it to the frames and then adding some embellishments. Very easy to do, very inexpensive. The project cost me a total of, well, $3.75 for the frames because I'm in Canada, so each frame was $1.25 from the Dollar Tree. And then I had jute rope left over, so it didn't cost me anything, but I mean, jute rope is another $1.25, so basically around five dollars for the entire project there's so little embellishments that um, you could just use anything you kind of have around your house and if you don't then an add another dollar for that I'm not gonna bother talking through the whole video through the whole um, process but you can see what I'm doing just adding jute rope and just gluing them together if you wanted it to be a little bit easier you could um, cut out with a piece of cardboard and glue these on there um, I'm just using two pieces or three pieces depending on the letter so for this one I used three pieces and for the O I used three pieces for the Y I used two and then I just added a little bit at the top um, but again fairly easy to do So once you have your letters glued down, then you want to do your embellishments. So what I chose to do was I, ch I had these berries. It was a pack of berries that I got at the Dollar Tree. And um, what I'm doing is I'm just painting them white. And I'm only using about six berries. So you could cut these off if you had them, if you had like a little Christmas pick. And it would, like I said, it would cost you even more because then you could just do for $1.25. You could do your greenery and everything else. But I had these, so I wanted to use them up. So I'm gluing this down and originally I thought I would just put it on the little clip here for the letters um, and then once I put it down and I looked at it I decided I didn't like the way it looked so I changed the position of them and I added some greenery.
So here's the finished project. I really like the way it trans For my why I am using this pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. It is something that I bought um, when like during Halloween and it just reminded me of a Santa or a gnome so I thought this would be great for a Christmas craft and I was really excited to have found it. I'm sure you could find a Santa in this exact shape too if you wanted to but I found this so I bought it right away. So the first step for this project is that I have to remove all of the pipe cleaner off of here and I'm not cutting it all up. I'm actually going to keep all of that pipe cleaner because I may use it for Halloween next year. And um, this is another easy project. All the things that you need are basically um, a mop, some fabric for the hat, and um, something for the nose, whatever you can find. So what I'm using is I am using... Um, a tree skirt that I bought at Dollar Tree for his hat, um, a Dollar Tree mop for his beard, and one of those styrofoam balls um, that you can get in a pack at Dollar Tree as well. So again, so we have one, two, three, four. So the mop, the hat, the nose, and the body. So four dollars basically for this one. Five dollars if you live. Um, in Canada because dollar twenty five like I said before again and another easy one this one is a little bit more time consuming because you have to glue the beard but and again another easy project to do so what you see me do here is I'm just mopping and mopping I'm just hot gluing the bits of the mop to the gnome now these are already taken off of the mop part I will link my other gnome videos to the top here and you can see um, this is all from one mop head. So I've made, this is now uh, gnome number three and I still have bits left over for more if I wanted to. Um, so that mop goes a long way. And you just cut the strings to the length that you want them and then you glue them one by one um, to your frame. Once you actually glue all of your pieces down, then what you're going to want to do to make the beard look fluffier and fuller, you're going to want to unravel each one of the mop strings. So you want to make sure when you're gluing it, you're only gluing it at the top, not at the bottom as well. They have to be loose at the bottom. So that way you can unravel them and make the beard look fuller and a little bit kind of like curly, almost like a Santa or a gnome. So it's like... You've seen gnomes before, so so it looks that way. Now you could totally add arms or feet to this gnome. I didn't, but you could. Um, and how you unravel these, so they're just like, it's quite easy to just kind of start separating them. Don't do it too, too much because if you start separating them all the way, it'll separate all the way to the top and then you're not gonna have anything left. So then for the hat, I just wrapped, well, I wrapped the tree skirt around to see how much material I would need. And again, if you've seen me do DIYs before, I don't like to waste things. So I try to be really careful to use the least amount of material that I can. Um, so I cut the material down and then I did, actually I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, I used a little bit of... Um, of the the fake snow that you can buy that kind of pulls apart a little bit like a cotton ball for the top of his hat you could also use cotton balls I just didn't have any
And here is the finished piece. I think it turned out really cute. Like I said, you could arm, you could add arms and legs. I chose not to for this guy. For my first DIY, I'm going to be using this splatter screen and this little red truck from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start off with muting those gold colors on that say Merry Christmas because I did want to keep the Merry Christmas on there. So I'm just going to actually just color in over them with a black Sharpie. So it'll still have a little bit of that gold kind of coming through, but it won't be so shiny and so in your face. So I'm going to do that several times because um, the Sharpie doesn't quite... Um, stick to the glitter um, on the first try so I just do it I think I around two or three times I go over the letters so once I do that I go ahead and spray paint my splatter screen now I'm going to be using um, spray paint for this and as well I'm going to be using some brown paint um, it's brown chalk paint from art minds it's the espresso so i'm going to be using both i'm going to spray paint the spire uh, screen gold and then i will go over top of it just dry brush it a little bit and i'll show you how i do that with the brown but just so you can see um, which paints I used and while that's drying I'll move on to the next step so the next step is to paint over the little red truck in um, some of that brown from Art Mines and I'm doing this just again to give it that kind of more rustic farmhousey look um, so I'm just uh, dry brushing brown over top of the truck and that's this is when I'm going to also dry brush around the splatter screen it's pretty much dry now so so lately when I've been dry brushing, I always like to kind of blend the paint in using a baby wipe. I just really love the way the paint looks once I do that. So I've been doing that a lot and I've been really happy with the result. So that's what I'm doing here that you can see me kind of wiping it off. Um, so I add, I wipe off, I add, I wipe off. And I do this until I get the color that I'm looking for, the texture or whatever I'm doing until I get like what I'm looking for. So then I go ahead and see what I'm going to put in the back of this truck. I thought I might use these Christmas trees, but then I decided that I think I'm going to just use my Christmas evergreen picks that I got from the Dollar Tree. Um, this is why I got them, because I knew I could use them in different projects. So I wanted it to look like there was some greenery in the back of the pickup truck. So I'm just going to cut out some of these branches and use them on the back of the truck. And I'm going to just be hot gluing them onto the truck. It's so after I get the truck all done, then I go ahead and I glue it to the splatter screen. I want it to look like the truck is going up a hill. So that's how I glue it on the splatter screen. And I also add these little beads that I got from the Dollar Tree. Um, I add them around the splatter screen so that way it just gives a little bit more detail to that splatter screen and I wind up painting them in that espresso as well but again just kind of dry brushing over top of them and that is it so after I attached the bead beads I didn't want the handle to be so obvious um, so and I I was too nervous to cut it off and I also like the fact that you could it had a little hole to hang it so I thought it would be great if I wanted to hang it on a wreath hanger. So what I did was I created a little bow. Now I am not someone who's good at making bows just yet. I will get there. Never used to make them. So I kind of just did my own thing with the bows. It's this, this isn't really a tutorial for bows. So um, that's why I'm not slowing it down. I just kind of turned, made little loops from... Um, this really cute little red truck ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree and this red ribbon and then like I said I made loops and then I just attached little longer parts for it to look like it was a bow but again it wasn't I mean some of 
the creators that you you can watch they make fabulous posts and they have great tutorials and they're better people to watch for these tutorials mine is just simple so if you want to know like a simple way that you can put together a bow without actually creating a fabulous bow this is the way you do it just create a bunch of loops and then attach some longer pieces so it looks like the ribbon part of the bow is hanging off and then you'll have a bow i think it turned out really cute um and I may do it again because it was easy and it didn't use a ton of ribbon and it did the trick. And so I added this thinner ribbon as well just to give it a bit more depth and dimension and that's it. So after attaching all of the ribbon and dry brushing the little beads, so basically adding all of the final touches, I was happy with the finished product and here is what it came out to. So my next DIY is a lot of fun as well. Um, really you only need a few things. You need this cane then you need this uh, plaid tree skirt, all from the Dollar Tree. The cane is one of those wreath struck, like wreath metal frames. And you're going to need some ribbon for your bow and some hot glue. Again, another really easy, and some scissors obviously, but again, another really easy DIY and very inexpensive. So before I start cutting, I want to start my cane and I want it to start with the little white fur at the bottom or at the top of the cane, actually at the top and bottom of the cane. And then I kind of, I hot glue it there in place and then I see where I can cut. So I'm using the least amount of material possible. I will make this small tree skirt last me the entire, like it'll cover the entire cane. And that was my goal. I don't like to waste anything. So this was a great way of putting it together. And I just make sure that I'm gluing it right at the edge, like kind of overlapping over a little bit so that it doesn't show if you're hanging it up so it looks like it's wrapped all the way around but in fact I'm not wrapping the back. Then I follow that same pattern all around the cane where I cut what I need then I glue what I need and then I cut it again so I'm not cutting before I glue a piece down because I was afraid that I would cut and not have enough so um that's why I didn't cut like right away and it worked out really really well so here I'm just showing you how I'm wrapping it around just a little bit so it doesn't show like I said when you're hanging it up so it looks like it's wrapped all the way around I will play some music for you guys so you can enjoy so that you guys can watch what I'm doing without listening to me talk So one more quick thing where you can see where I'm joining the, the fabrics together I do a straight um, fold so that way the seam isn't so visible and it's right around the curve so it m looks like it was a part of the cane in the first place but I will also be adding a bow there so it won't be as visible.
So I'm a little bit more generous of my fabric at the finish here because I want to make sure that I'm covering everything. And I want to make sure that the little bottom part is attached to my fabric. So that way the fur is also at the bottom of the cane. So here's what I'm talking about. I'll just overlap everything here and it'll be actually just a little bit past the bottom of the cane, the little fur, but that is okay because that's... I need it to be at the bottom. I wanted to have a nice little finish there. And then I wind up adding bows. Again, like I said in the other part, this will not be a bow tutorial, but I attempted to make a proper bow with this one, and I think I did a pretty good job. So here's the bow that I made. I, like I said, I didn't record myself making it because it took me a really long time time to make it and I don't think anyone would have wanted to see me fumble through that so once I get better at these bows I will do a tutorial but I didn't think I had any business doing one since uh, I'm still learning so I'm deciding whether I'm going to add which of these little red trucks I'm going to add to my bow to complete my cane wreath and I've decided that I'm going to do with the I'm going to add the bigger uh, red truck that says Merry Christmas and I'm just gonna hot glue my bow to the cane and then I will hot glue the little red truck and that'll bring this DIY to an end. So here's the completed cane wreath and again I'm super happy with the way it turned out. I think it's very very cute. It'll again be a beautiful addition to my decor. I will be using another uh, three um, grease splatter screens as well as some floral wire, some white spray paint. And then you just need a, a some sort of block. It could be a wood block. It could be anything um, just for your base. This I had a scrap piece of wood, but I mean, if you didn't have a scrap piece of wood, you could use... Um, you could even use a book and hot glue it to a book, like a heavier book, because you can get books at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 and they're hardcover books. It's really anything that you can um, attach these splatter screens to. I just happen to have scrap pieces of wood at home, so that's what I used. What I do then is I bend these splatter screens um, down so that I can attach them to my piece of wood and I do it with the two um, ones that I'm using for the base the third one I'm using for the top so you don't need to bend that one and then as I'm doing this I realize this little piece of wood is too small so I wind up using a bigger piece of wood um, so just keep that in mind you want to make sure that your piece of wood is big enough long enough and wide enough um, or whatever you're using so that way you can either hot glue it i wound up screwing these in because screws work better than hot glue um, in terms of keeping it sticking longer so i wound up getting my husband to help me screw them down so that way um, i could make sure that they stay there for good and then i wind up spray painting them white before I spray paint, I want to make sure I attach all the splatter screens together and then screw them in as well. So I'm just attaching them. This is where your floral wire comes in. I'm just attaching them with the floral wire. Um, the base screens first and then the top screen. I'm measuring to see whether they'll fit on my block. And then I'm also measuring to see whether I like the way that looks um, as a snowman. So this is kind of to your liking this was my measurements were so if you want to make my ex one exactly like mine I did six inches apart so just so that you're aware but that's um, that's how I did mine so um, but you can do yours however you'd like once I attach my screens, I quickly realize it won't work with my small block. So I go ahead and I just grab another piece of uh, wood that I had. I believe this is from some sort of shelving or something that we had. Or I don't even know. It was just a scrap piece of wood that I found in my husband's workshop. So I'm going to hold it down while he screws it down. 
Um, it's a, as you can see, it's as wide as the snowman, and it'll actually even look better in the long run. So if you used one of those books from the Dollar Tree, the bigger hardcover books, it would hold it down and you could uh, glue it down as well. So really just because I used a block of wood and you don't have one, you don't have to go out and buy a block of wood. You can just um, use something like that and obviously not screw it in, just hot glue it together. And if you don't have white spray paint or the gold spray paint like in the previous project, you can always just um, use the acrylic paint. I just found it to be easier with spray painting. I didn't record the spray painting because that's pretty self-explanatory. I've done lots of spray paint tutorials as well, so if you want to see that, you can see it on a different video. Just for the sake of time, I didn't want this video to be too, too long. Um, once that's done, I just go ahead and I have this little sock from the Dollar Tree. Um, it was a pair of socks that I got. One sock I'll use for another uh, DIY. And then this one I'll just use, um, I'll cut it down so that it makes one long piece and then I cut it in the middle to make two pieces so I can make a nice little scarf for my snowman and um, then I use some black cardstock from the Dollar Tree uh, for his buttons and then um, a piece of felt that I had but you can get these at the Dollar Tree as well in orange for his nose and the black card socket is for his eyes as well as his um, mouth. You could do buttons. I just didn't have enough buttons. And I believe the Dollar Tree has buttons for sewing and stuff. So you could always use those. But this is what I chose to use. I also use that cardstock to make a top hat for the snowman. So one sheet gave me all of this. One black sheet gave me um, enough. It was enough for the hat, the nose, the mouth. Uh, sorry, the hat, the mouth, and the buttons. So I wound up adding some boxwood to the scarf as well as some tissue paper to the base of the snowman. And I painted around the base in white just because for some reason the paint didn't stick. You could use acrylic. I used chalk paint. And I attached the hat as well as um, some of the leftover red ribbon to the hat and another little piece of greenery to complete my snowman. Here is the finished snowman. I think he is super cute.